It's the biggest internet phenomenon since Minecraft, arguably more popular right now than the Marvel Universe, drawing in more viewers than the season finale of Game of Thrones, a TV show that is way less violent. What makes Skibbity Toilet so popular? What's its secret? There must be a reason for that, other than people just like it. We think there's something deeply psychological going on, which we'll discuss later. If you're in a certain age group, this fairly new ultra-wacky animated series is about as big as entertainment gets, and yet it's left some people scratching their heads, saying the only place Skibbity Toilet deserves is to be down the toilet with the collective ejected excretions of mankind. Even so, it's making its owners millions of dollars. It's an A-plus YouTube channel bringing in an absolutely staggering 1.6-plus billion viewers a month, with over 10 billion views in total, making it the most watched show on YouTube the week we started making this video. As we'll show you today, this won't last for long, but for now, this series is wiping away the competition. Yes, today there will be puns. Let's see how many you can count. Its young owner, 25-year-old Alexei Karasimov from the Eastern European country of Georgia, hasn't done a day of university, and yet he's now absolutely flush with money. Cash is tinkling down on him from the Google HQ, and then he's skibbity dancing all the way to the bank under torrential golden showers. He's doing this in a country where the National Statistics Office says the average monthly wage is $687.57, and without a college degree you could find yourself cleaning public urinals for 200 bucks a month. He's cracked it, smashed it, and pebble dashed the internet with his seemingly unstoppable product. So whatever you think about Skibbity Toilet, it's a resounding success. But the question we want to answer is, is it just dumb fun, or are there hidden depths to this toilet humor? Is Skibbity Toilet maybe the modern-day Greek epic, far more intelligent than you give it credit for? As for the Skibbity Toilets themselves, where did they come from in their universe, and how's the story going to end? Some of you folks who have been living under a stone might now be thinking, uh, what the hell is the infographic show talking about? What skibbity toilet? So, first, a rundown of the series from start to the latest episode. The whole series has a dystopian element to it. From out of nowhere, strange heads pop up out of urinals, quite frightening looking heads that can consume humans. Before we know it, these toilets grow stronger, they march down the streets, small ones at the side of boss level toilets. We see them in a restaurant, but now we also see humans sitting on toilets next to dinner tables. We talk later about this transition scene, but for now, you just need to know all the humans get consumed. It seems these toilets spawn with ease. Tiny toilets move around larger ones. They fly through the air in the streets, blasting out small toilets from their mouths. They soon seemingly take over the world, only for human-looking figures with cameras on their heads to appear out of nowhere. These are cyborgs. They soon learn that to kill the skibbity toilet, all they have to do is flush them. Soon we see camera heads fighting off skibbity toilet policemen, which must mean that the camera heads are a renegade rebel army here to fight the Earth's new master race. We also see this master race has its own religion and church. A full-on war takes place, and this war pretty much is the entire show, with videos just lasting over a minute. The episodes introduce Titan camera heads and Titan speaker heads, which might look invincible, but if there's one thing this series tells us, this war is never ending. Somewhere, there is a great foundry where new weapons and new entities are created. It seems there's an endless conveyor belt of these things. We'll soon tell you why the series won't end for quite a while. We see parasite toilets that can get into the enemy and control their minds, making them fight against their own side. Then we see a TV head, which can emit a beam of light that kills the toilets only for the toilets to come back and wear dark sunglasses to resist the light. At times, we see a giant TV head that's armed with huge speakers, and when it blasts out an earth-shaking organ sound, the toilets explode. Even after defeat, the toilet heads are relentless. It seems they're fighting under some kind of Nazi-esque propaganda. Variants of them come out of nowhere. Three triple toilets, three-headed toilets, toilets on legs, ones that move faster, and like Terminators, you can't bargain with them. They show no pity or remorse or fear. They absolutely will not stop, ever, until everyone is dead. Much like the toy in movie franchise Transformers, both sides see new variants and new weapons, and seem to fight to the last man, only it's never the last man. Meanwhile, every now and again you can hear the cool 80s tune by the group Tears for Fears, Everybody Wants to Rule the World. Just when it seems one side is on top, a new variant will crush them, whether it's with bombs or a circular saw or kamikaze fighters or using toilet plungers as weapons. The titans rule the roost and the smaller machines do the grunt work. Many episodes we see all kinds of figures such as the giant rocket skibbity toilet or the strider skibbity toilets and the leader of the toilets, the G-Man. 
he might come up against the Parasite Disabler laser tank armed with a Parasite Disabler gun and manned by a large scientist cameraman. The last episode we watched featured a battle between a helmeted toilet with huge guns strapped to it fighting a Titan speaker head and a Titan camera head. The latter two are victorious, and as the episode ends they shake hands to uplifting music as normal speaker-sized heads and camera heads walk through the streets. It feels like the end of a movie, but of course it isn't. This is a battle that can't be won, or won't be won, for the simple reason that the creator Garasimov is, according to Social Blade, a website that tallies up YouTube views, making anywhere from $374,000 to $6 million a month. Remember, if he were in Georgia making the average wage, he wouldn't be breaking $700 a month if he really does earn $6 million a month. Based on a 40-hour, 5-day week, he'd be earning $37,500 an hour. Let's go low. Let's say he earns a million dollars a month. He'd still be $6,250 an hour. Do you really think he wants this battle to end? If he were on a thousand bucks an hour, he'd be in an elite circle not just in Georgia but the world. Skibidi one percenters don't kill their own cash cows. We can't say exactly how much he's earning since those websites that do YouTube calculations don't always get it right, but there is no doubt at all that this young guy is now a multi-millionaire. So, how did he do it? Well, he's been animating for a long time and publishing on YouTube since 2014, but it was only at the start of 2023 that his channel shot into hyperspace. 1.6 billion views a month is insane. It would be hard to think of any entertainment product that's ever been that popular. He smashed all TV records, that's for sure. Gerasimov took the songs in his videos from a viral TikTok meme in 2022 posted by the user at Yasensengiz38 who danced and jiggled his rather large belly to the song Skibidi Bop Yes Yes Yes. Grasimov took the toilet head twisted expressions from Paris Brand's own Skibidi Dop Dop Yes Yes video. Grasimov said in an interview, I did a parody of her take on the Skibidi Dop Dop Yes Yes meme. Skibidi toilet video was a random thing, just based from an unexpected head popping out of the toilet. The assets in his animation are taken from Half-Life 2, Gary's Mod, and Counter-Strike. What we want to know is, what does it all mean? Well, for one thing, he does what he can within the bounds of technological possibility. He admitted once that he uses a certain program because it's easier to access different assets. Viewers are well aware that the next episode that they watch might introduce a new character or a new weapon, which could indeed make the series never-ending. Grasimov said not too long ago that the series would stay for a while, but when you're raking in millions of dollars in a relatively poor country where wages are low, you keep working until people stop watching. There's no backstory, but because it's so vague it challenges people to make a backstory themselves, which is part of the fun. It gets our creative brain working. We might wonder why he chose toilets to take over the world, which we think just has a lot to do with comedy. It's a funny and absurdist slant on gaming animation. Pooping is also taboo, and taboo is attractive to most young folks, makes them laugh. But there might be a more serious part of the story after all. We're seeing a base humanity, the things we poop inside, fight against the rise of technology. We're seeing progress fight something very basic that's been with us forever. The series also seems like a commentary on mass surveillance. We humans become cyborgs, part of the machinery that we invented. Gerasimov is saying technology will become omniscient, and it'll fight the most basic part of us that wants to rule the world. It's poop versus progress. The flushing toilets are like the technological future flushing away the primitive old days. The so-called father of psychoanalysis Sigmund Freud had a theory regarding psychosexual development called the anal stage, when children become obsessed with their anus, either pushing stuff out of it or keeping it in. Freud said we must get over the stage where we risk experiencing arrested development in adulthood. Kids might turn into adults who are anal retentive and apt to worship authority, or they might become anal expulsive and rebel against authority. We think this animation is popular because it's subversive and taboo, it's rebellious. It's all about a basic part of us fighting our inventions, it is the past versus the future. Are the toilets who worship authority caught in the anal stage of life? Are younger people who live in a world of technology, screens, speakers, and cameras rebelling against these toilets, aka authority, vicariously when they watch the series? Is that too deep? Maybe. But there has to be a reason it's so popular, and we think it has a lot to do with poop. Of course, the absurdist element makes it funny, and the violent element makes it unnerving, but there is likely something deep inside those fans that compels them to keep on watching. Kids are obsessed with poop and pee, so choosing toilets as ruthless overlords is an act of genius, whether intended or accidental. 
The problem is there's nowhere for the series to evolve besides introducing new figures and new weapons. If there is a storyline, it's that humans were wiped out and possibly became cyborgs, camera heads, etc. That might have been able to self-replicate, possibly through machine learning or artificial intelligence. That's why they keep evolving in the series. The machine keeps learning. When it's beaten, it bounces back. The problem is the story has no depth other than the depth you give it in your own head. That can wear thin. You could look at a potato and imagine it in a great battle, but for how long? It won't be until Skibbity Toilet is flushed into the trash can of history and in a year kids at school will be saying, oh my god, you're not still watching that, are you? We think the finale will just be the introduction of some new character that levels everything in sight and then that'll be the end. There will be an explosion and something like a butterfly will fly across the screen. Nature has returned. It's a story without depth, but it's a damn popular one for now. And Mr. Grasimov can be happy with his work and retire on a beach someplace. He's exploited something in people's minds, our obsession with poop and also our fear of technology. That's smart, if he meant it. He's done a great job, but we won't be watching episode 983. Now you need to watch I Tried to Live a Normal Life in GTA 5 online and this is what happened. Or have a look at, is virtual reality the next step for prisons?